Desk Lady Ada. Hey everybody and welcome to a Desk Lady Ada. It's springtime and we're springing into engineering. Yes, that's I guess a saying. Uh, it's me, Lady Ada. Here I am at my desk with me, Mr. Lady Ada on camera control, who uh, will make witty commentary and uh, funny jokes while I talk about some engineering I've been doing. So we can get uh, right into it. Do you have any news or updates you want to kick to people before I get into the no. electronics? Full speed ahead with okay. all of our shows. Um, tune in. Lots of stuff going on. Uh, we're on a roll for new products and more. So all the socials from TikTok to Facebook to Instagram to YouTube to LinkedIn to you name it, Twitter. Yeah. We're there and just uh, subscribe to all of them so you can get an idea of what we're doing because there's a lot of live open design. It's true. So you can watch and participate. Speaking of, okay. what, what, did, what did you work on? Well, this weekend, you know, some weekends are like layout weekends, and some weekends are like prototype weekends, and some are tester weekends. So this was actually a tester weekend. I had a bunch of testers I had to fix uh, and improve on. It was also kind of nice out, so I went outside a few times. Um, and uh, But we were chatting last week, uh, Mr. Lady Aid and I, about keyboard stuff, because we'd been doing a couple keyboard things. So let's, let's go to the overhead real fast, and I'll just show the, the keyboard stuff we already designed on the show. So I already designed the Neo key, and this was like a breadboard friendly, you know, it's, it's breadboard spacing friendly, little mechanical uh, keyboard part. You can use a MX or a MX compatible key. This is a nice clicky uh, kale box white. And um, this is, you know, it's, it's chainable, and it's got like a diode and a socket and uh, a reverse mount NeoPixel. Um, so this is really great for making uh, NeoPixel backlit um, mechanical key projects that only have like one or two keys. So, you know, very, very simple. You could, you could line these up on a, on a breadboard or a perf board. So it's really great for like, I just need one or two keys and these are like a buck a piece or something. Very cheap. Um, and there's, you know, as, I, as you've seen, they're, they're socketed. So they're easy to switch out whatever key you want. Love these kale sockets. Uh, we also made um, the Featherwing version, which has you know, two keys and you, you have a NeoPixel behind them as well. And then this plugs into any and all feathers. Um, really easy to make, you know, a simple two button macro pad. In this case, it was, I was kind of making a joke on the, um, the, the April Fool's project from uh, Stack Overflow that a copy paste keyboard um, as part of their premium service. So um, we had these keys. Uh, okay, so can we go to, um, back to me. Okay, so we had these uh, key switches and, you know, then we're I was thinking like, okay, well, we want to make a, you know, like a larger project, like a macro pad now that the footprint is, is settled. You know, I really like to get my footprints down before I build bigger projects. And, um, you know, Phil and I were chatting and I was like, okay, well, we could have like an RP2040 at one end and then like a three by five matrix, you know, like JP made or four by six or like we kind of argued, not argued, discussed various different sizes. Um, you know, do we want to um, have like long and thin? Do we want to have it like squarish? You know, uh, uh, Pimeroni has like four by four. Do we want more or less? And like we couldn't really come up with a good idea. And so we're like, well, maybe we should make it so like you could snap it apart um, so you could, you know, remove it, you know, if necessary. And um, so we chatted about that, but I didn't actually get to lay it out. So I thought before we added a microcontroller, I would just try to make a snap apart grid. And this was really inspired by um, the proto snap boards um, that SparkFun made. So let's let's go look at those because those are cool. So the proto snap, I thought was really a cool idea. So if you look, I remember when these came out, we're like, well, if it if we if it becomes popular and there's like lots of things to do, and we see some people using them, we'll you know we'll stock it or we'll make something like it or better. And I think they discontinued it. So I think they did, but they have other they have put so yeah. Items, so I think but I like this, this idea. I think in this form factor, where you're not going to be snapping things apart as much, it might not make sense. But for other things wearables or maybe even keyboards which you're talking yeah. about i think that's a better fit for that yeah, type like, of... like a couple companies do stuff like this snap apart but yeah. if, you, if you look carefully there's traces and the traces go between these little holes and so you know you, you get it as one kind of credit card shaped thing and you can see the traces um kind of on top here 
they go between the holes and when you snap it apart you're breaking the trace like the holes make a perforation that makes it easy to snap apart and so i was like okay i want to do something like that and i googled around and i even found something really similar and this is actually a really great design this is from keycaps it's the name of the company keycaps and um, they made a little grid of five by five, and you can see it doesn't use holes, but it's, it's, it's got such a thin little neck on the um, connector. And I also really like the circles in the corner, like they have these circle spots for mounting, and so I really like that idea. And it's actually kind of close to what I want, except this doesn't have a NeoPixel, and this is also not assembled. Uh, it's also not in stock. But I like the idea, it's, you know, it's got the kale socket, it's got the diode, um, and it's a snap apart uh, piece. Uh, it's allergy season. Okay, so, um, and this is a uh, whew, a little bit less than it's basically seventy five uh, mil, seven hundred fifty mil. So it's it's uh, designed for basic keyboards, and then there's these holes, and then you can, um, you know, they're connected through, and then you snap apart whatever you don't need. So I like this and I was like, okay, I want to do something like this. I mean, eventually I'm going to have a microcontroller on one end. So I'll have like a Pico or an RP2040 and then I'll have this grid so you can like, you know, you have this driver and then you can snap off to make whatever configuration you want. Um, so this was, uh, this was kind of good. This was inspiration. When I saw this, I was like, okay, this, this is the thing that I'm going to oh, use. Seed has a snap apart kit. Did they? Who? Seed has one they too. have an Arduino one, I think, with Grove stuff, too. That's yeah. right. They do. There's, it's not that, it's not that uncommon. So what I did, and this is a, a weird. So I was like, okay, I want to, you know, I basically, this is the finished one, so I'm like, we're going backwards in time. So this is what it looks like finished-ish, almost. But I really didn't want to lay out, like, six, this is six by five. I didn't want to lay out 30 copies of the same board. So what I did is I actually made an Eagle CAD um, one object. So this is like one CAD footprint, and I like literally copy and pasted like the footprint for a diode and the footprint for the NeoPixel. So this looks like one object to Eagle CAD. Um, you know, I still have to do the routing, but you know, at least I don't have to put all the you know put all the silk screen in the right location for each one and have it like all you know because it's it's so easy to make a little mistake you thought you grabbed a part you didn't and now like it's all shifted a little bit um and it's like shifted by like five mil and you'll you'll never find it but it'll drive you crazy later so um you know i added uh two little holes here these are the part of the snap apart and then in the t-docu layer i um let's see I put in where the route would go. So this is the route. It's not the actual route. And the reason is, is that I, I want, I, for the top and bottom of the board, I want railings. So I was like, I'm, I'm gonna have to draw the routing, but that's not so bad, right? I'll, I can do that with just some thick lines. Um, what I really don't want to do again is, is lay out all of these little components. So these are all, these are all in one. And I even add a little capacitor for um, the NeoPixel right next to the power pan. So that's great. And um, even showing the direction. And so, what I did is I made a matrix of these, you know, so you've got the rows and then this object, this is the graphical object. It actually has the diode built into it. Oh yeah, it's a question. Is this the Eagle version of cut and paste? It's not, it's more like the Eagle version of group, which doesn't exist. You know how like in, in graphics program, yeah, you usually can you group, group, then you copy. And then you can, well, it's not copy and paste. It's like you can duplicate and, and, yeah. and array. There, that doesn't, exist as far as I could tell in Eagle Cat. I, I couldn't group things. So the best I can do is just make a footprint. Yeah. And then, you know, the footprint is, you know, in the object. This is kind of advanced. I've actually never really done that. Maybe I did this for the Neo Trellis. It's the only time otherwise that I've done this where, again, there was six, 16 of something, and I really wanted it to be exactly the same for all 16. Um, so I called this a tile socket. And so the, the socket has... Everything's inverted, I don't know why. But um, it has the switch and the diode, right? Because those are built in together. Um, and then to trick it, I had to put a connection here because that way I could actually tie the pieces together. And then um, this is interesting. So this is a NeoPixel, right? This is the reverse mount NeoPixel. And here's this resistor. And the resistor was like my aha moment in the shower where I was like, 
the, the problem that I couldn't figure out when I was working on this was, okay, so you've got this grid, right? And so let's say you've got, um, you know, NeoPixel data coming out here. Maybe I'll, I'll, hold on. Okay, so let me screenshot so I can, I can draw on this. So you've got NeoPixel data coming in here, right? And then it goes, you know, it, it chains down, 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 down. I can chain it through. And then it comes out here. And then this row, right, is it like, am I going to have to have multiple NeoPixel lines? Like what I really want, ideally, is the NeoPixels all act like a chain, right? You have a zigzag chain, and they go back and forth. And I have the rows and the columns. So I have like one pin for each row, one pin for each column. I've got my key matrix with diodes, so it's like there's no ghosting. And then the NeoPixels do an elegant little swisheroo. And so I have like one NeoPixel chain for all my pins. So what I did was like, okay, well, you know, if you look, I actually flipped the key direction here. The NeoPixels actually go the other direction on this side. So these go like here and these go like here. So, you know, you've got, you've got the, the zigzag process kind of started here. But then I'm like, well, are they going to have to like jump or a pin? And the, again, the goal was kind of to avoid as much soldering as possible. I mean, yeah, if they absolutely have to, but like, would it be possible for me to not have them have to solder in a, you know, a, a wire to make it uh, do the swirl? And um, especially if I had the, the Pico or something on one side, and again, I really, it, you know, you could, you could theoretically do it all without any soldering at all. It would be a purely mechanical break apart kit. And so the extra resistor that you see is, so this is the input, right? So you see this is the input of the NeoPixel chain, goes into the data input. This goes to the data output. So the data output also goes down here. And it goes through a 10K, 4.7K resistor. Very weak resistor, but enough to pass data through, right? It's not power, but it's for data. And this goes into the input um, of the of the pin. Actually, well, you know, this is the, the end. So let's go to the end, sorry. So this is the output. So the output goes through a resistor down here into the input of the next level down of NeoPixel. And so what happens is that if, if a NeoPixel has a NeoPixel driving it, like from here to here to here, like these are direct, dr directly driven, it'll take the data from the previous one. But if there is no previous one, it'll take the data from the one above it. So that means that for all of these, these uh, five here, they all take data from the previous one. This one doesn't have a, sorry. This NeoPixel doesn't have a previous, so it takes data from the top. So this will actually end up doing a serpentine zigzag in theory. Um, I'll need a resistor on each one, but resistors are like a penny or half a penny, so who cares? Okay, it's a question. All right, so will they be connected until you snap them apart? Yeah, so they'll be like pre-connected. And if you look, I mean, they have headers. But if you look, there's a little mini neck. See, it's like, it's like, ooh, very skinny, seven mil, right? Going through the, this uh, routed part, the white routed out part, and these two little holes that will give it the snap apart ability. So that's the idea. And then I just have to, so I, I did the tiling of them. So I yeah, tiled them up and then I, 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 I connected them together um, into six, columns, five rows, and then one zigzag NeoPixel. Um, and you will have to provide power and ground on each. The power and ground come with the, the rows and columns, but I think that's fine. I think it's fair. Just, you know, yes, you have to provide, um, you know, the power and ground on each row and each column, because otherwise it, there's just too many pins. And what's nice is that you can see here in the corner, there's plenty of room here. So what I can do is... Uh, I keep losing the drill. So if on the drill, I can, oh, sorry, I have a, I can put like a, you know, M3 hole here, or even larger, um, on each corner, and then um, this will be the me mechanical, the, you can put a screw in to mechanically hold it against um, whatever, like, mechanical substrate you want. To, to keep it uh, from flexing, or if you, know, if you want to keep it steady, and then you solder to you know, the input and output pins. Okay. Uh, two questions, or just confirmation. So it prefers a stronger signal than the weaker one via 
resistor one. Yeah, it's actually it's similar to the trick I showed with the um, the boot pin on um, the RP2040, right? It's like it, a NeoPixel has a pretty good drive strength. So as long as there is a NeoPixel directly driving it, um, you're going to always listen to that signal because it's a, it's a direct push-pull drive. But if there isn't, that 4K or whatever resistor will, will leak the signal through from the top. It won't, it won't get in the way of a NeoPixel, but it will let you pass the data on the edges. So even if you snap, no matter from which edge you snap, as long as you end up with a rectilinear shape, you're always going to get a serpentine of NeoPixel data. All right. Um, does the last one at the bottom right loop back to the upper left? No, that would be weird. <laughs> no, you want, it, you want it to end. You snake like has a head, kidding. snake has a tail. Okay, yeah. I mean, in, in toroidal space, but we're not in toroidal space. So I'm not nearly done with this. I have to do the routing, and I have to do the mounting holes. So there's, there's still quite a bit to do here. But I did just finish this layout, which just, like, took way it, – it still took a long time. Um, just, you know, it's like every time I was like, okay, like I learned something, or and like I had to go back and change the footprint, and I changed the layouts, and then I would copy and paste it in Eagle CAD to, to make the um, – I actually use import, which allows you to – get both the layout and the schematic if you you know you can import yourself and so it would exponentially increase the number of, of pads but it wasn't too bad and once i got the layout for each one done it's not so bad so you can actually see um if i turn off you know all these layers that we don't want to see you can see the um this has the NeoPixel arrow going from right to left, because this is inverted, you know, it's inverted. And then it goes left to right, and then right to left, and then left to right. So it's it's doing the zigzag. So that's this is the the Neo key snap, what I was gonna call it. Yeah. Okay, request and then some more. It'd be cool if you build an array that could only take key switches but also pots and encoders. You can't do that with with the socket chaos, but it, I might be able to do it if I make ones that you solder in. So the the thing is, I could probably do you know, yes, but no. It, if you if it was rotary encoders, you can key matrix them. So I'm starting with this, which is an ortho linear layout, which is oh wait, this is my hip hop radio. All right, I have another. So this is ortho linear, right? So I'm I'm, I'm looking at keys like this. And, and this is kind of what it's going to look like. You, you probably wouldn't make a full keyboard out of this. It would be good for macro pads. However, afterwards, I'll try doing a staggered one. Um, so you could do like staggered, maybe split keys. And then um, I think if I was going to do a version that could do rotary encoders, I would probably have like the microcontroller board up top and then maybe like two rotary encoders and then snap apart grid. Because you, with rotary encoders, you, you can't do... It's not like keys where you can just you can always matrix more onto the columns and rows. With with rotary encoders, like it's dedicated pins, so there'd be dedicated rotary encoders, and then you could have more keys. Okay, zig uh, zigzag path down one row, back the next row. The opposite way is called a boustrophahedron. I'm, I'm gonna I said that wrong. Or Greek for as the ox plows. It's the way the ancient Greeks wrote lines at one time. They wrote their characters backwards every other line. A little bit of. History, so the question is, do you know do you know why? Well, that's a good question for the chat. Yeah. All right. So let's I, keep going. I think I know why, but I'll, I'll wait for them to. I'll wait to see if somebody else knows. Let's keep going. Okay, great. So um, next up, uh, so we were so okay. So this is cool. So we're gonna do ortholinear snap aparts. Um, so next up, Phil and I were chatting um, also, and we were like, we really want to get into NFTs um, because well, everyone's really into NFTs, and I was like, I know exactly to what you mean. Not Forever Trinkies. Yeah, so we have some Not Forever Trinkies. And these are some of the Trinkies that are coming out. And then we'll have some limited edition things that go with it. Uh, don't worry, we're not going to burn down the rainforest to do this. These are just physical electronics. Yeah, so, the rainforest Trinkie. Yeah. All right, so let's show the first, let's first show the first one. So so um, I, I got these like weird... Old like JP suggested these weird old Panasonic like, rotary encoder things are from the like, camcorders in the eighties. Um, I mean they kind of look they, that's exactly what they look like. That's exactly what they are. Uh, so I got like a, a bag of these. Um, I don't know how, you know they, these are obviously no longer made. Um, so I was thinking of making a trinky with them. So it's like you know this is your 
Trinky, and then it would like be mounted like this maybe, and then you'd have like a little like a scroll wheel. This is the way you wanted it, right, Phil? It was up and down. Yeah. Yeah. So it'd be like this, and you'd plug it into USB, and it would be a Trinky, but it would be not forever because these are no longer made. So whenever they run out, that's it. So it would be an NF Trinky. NFT. So that's that's my NFT idea. I don't know. I'm gonna patent that. And then um, next up, um, you're gonna see some cool camera stuff. This is not tricky related. This is just camera stuff. So uh, the Sandy 51, we added Arduino support for um, cameras. These these parallel capture cameras where they have H-Sync, V-Sync, eight data lines, and then you know a, a pixel clock or whatever. And um, they send data out, and you really need a peripheral to to read the data. They're not. You can't. It's not SPI or I squared C. It's like raw TTL, like scan line data is coming out. You got to read it. And um, so the SAMD51 has a peripheral for uh, one of these cameras. And um, the RP2040 doesn't have a peripheral, but you can do it with PIOs, like all of the PIOs, but like you can do it where you set it up and you can read the data into memory, which is, which is a good thing to do on the RP2040 because it has enough RAM to actually buffer a 640 by 480 image, I think, in 8-bit YUV. Um, or it's, no, sorry, 320 by 240 it can store in 16-bit color because uh, I think it's like 256K of RAM or something like that, or 192. Anyway, it has enough RAM. It can actually buffer, you know, images from um, these cameras. So, you know, it's it would be good for like machine learning projects with vision, like simple ones. Or we wanted to do like a pupil tracking project a long time ago. Um, this would be really good for that because you need the raw data, and then you want to do a little bit of basic filtering on it to to locate with yeah. the edge the computing eye not connected to the internet, not yeah. doing and storing facial recognition. So these technologies are powerful. But you have a choice on how you want to use them. So ours will be open source, hardware and software, and they won't be internet connected. Yeah. So um, before the keyboard warriors say, I thought you were, they ain't very wired, but... No, the whole I, the yeah. RP24 doesn't even have internet. It doesn't yeah. have Wi-Fi if you want to do. Yeah. You know what's so, working is to add Wi-Fi to So we can also look out for some of the folks in the electronics community that need to understand that not every company is making closed source cloud sending things. There are a few companies, mostly Adafruit, that do open source and publish everything. So let's support the ones that you want to see instead of just complaining. Okay, great. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the uh, overhead. But because I'm trying to stop like a bunch of things in the comments anytime You're we have a video. You're the one who wanted to call this thing NFT. I don't know. These are called not forever trinkies. I can't help that there's something else out there called NFT. It's not forever trinkies. And that's just what it is. Okay, so let's go to the My computer. initials are PMT. Can't change it. Okay, what do you want to do? Go to the computer. Yeah? All right. Um, so we wanted to, the only thing is, is that these modules, they're great, but they like have a, like, a, like three things that just slightly annoy me. Um, one is that they have this two by nine header um, and it's not breadboard friendly, so if you ever do want to do breadboard stuff with it, you have to like connect wires. So I laid out a version that has a second line out here. So if you solder in this row and this row, it's 0.3 inches apart, which means you can plug it into a solderless breadboard or perf board for like easier prototyping than testing. Um, second, it really drives me a little batty that you need to supply these uh, cameras with a 24 megahertz clock. Um, you know, on top of everything else that you're doing. So, you know, the same 51, you end up having to set up like a separate like timer with a PWM. And I was like, you know, you should really just have its own clock generator. It's not expensive. And it just like takes one less thing off of our plate. So this is an oscillator. Uh, we covered oscillators earlier. This is not a crystal. It actually, it has, you know, the, the NOR gate and the capacitors and everything um, built in, you just give it three volts and ground, and it gives you 24 megahertz, you know, beautiful square wave or sine wave outside. And so you'll you'll pipe that into here. Um, and then uh, last but not least, mounting holes. I really wanted mounting holes on these cameras so I could attach it to something. Um, so this has mounting holes. So I'm going to um, make this breakout for this OV2640 uh, module. It's very common. These are seen on the ESP32 cam and, like, RG cam. These are very, very common. 
Um, and then I want to make an all-in-one RP2040 plus camera friend that I think can yeah. do some cool stuff. We think that there is a cool learning experience for beginner programmers, advanced programmers, young folks. So from start to finish, they build an open source camera. And then at the end, they can make an animated GIF camera. They can make their own camera. And now they've understood how to write software, it'll be Python, and build a little hardware camera on their own because every, cameras are in everything, but do you really know how they work? Do you know how to make your own? Do you know how to see what's really happening? Coming soon. Okay. Um, all right, so next up, as we, let's, let's get into the great search. This is related to this camera. Every single week, The Great Search is brought to you by DigiKey, thank you, and Adafruit. We use all of Lady Ada's power of engineering and searching for components, millions of parts, on digikey.com. This week, we saw a question on Twitter, and this is from Gigmon Projects, who has a living Adafruit museum of like NeoPixel stuff, um, and does really good videos and content and tutorials and more. Started doing some research for PCB connectors last night, and I'm not sure I'll ever climb out of this rabbit hole. So we said, hey, we're doing our weekly great search for DigiKey on Sunday night. Put up any search requests before then, and we'll do up a vid. And she's like, oh, interesting. I'm a little hesitant because, you know, it's not a really well-defined thing right now. And a bunch of people said, no, that's actually a good place to consider starting. So Lady Ada, what are you showing in the great search this week? Okay, so uh, listen to me first, and then we'll go to DigiKey. So, um, I, you know, I was thinking about what am I going to cover on the Great Search, and, and this and this tweet popped up, and she said, "Well, I don't really know what I want, but I want a board-to-board -board connector that can, you know, it can be used for LEDs, and it can pass out a current." And I was thinking, you know, I really like just plain headers. You know, like sometimes I know that you know, we have special connectors sometimes, and we've done various connector searches here on the Great Search, and and for people have custom connectors that they want to specify, you know, waterproof ones or or ones that are like very high uh, current capability. But, you know, headers, they kind of work. They work really well. We use them a lot. And then I realized we hadn't done a great search on headers, or I uh -huh. couldn't find any proof that we had. Um, so if an alternate universe I did, congratulations, this is the second one. But um, it's also used in this camera, right? This is a, two, this is a camera with a 2x9 uh, header connector. So I thought I would show a couple um, headers off, and then when we go through DigiKey, when I refer to them, you'll know what I talk about. So let's go to the overhead real fast. Okay, so this is the um, camera I was referring to. So this has uh, header connectors for it. And this is actually a very standard camera connector. So the, the camera has an FPC, and then there's a little bit of supporting circuitry on the back, uh, voltage regulators and, and whatnot. And then you've got your two uh, by nine headers. So when you're looking for headers, you know, um, there's various names for these, you know, like Berg sticks or like Milmaxes or whatever. I just called them socket header and pin header. Uh, pin header is sometimes called male header, socket header is sometimes called female header. So if you're looking on some sites that use either terminology, they're, they're equivalent. Um, so usually they're, they're soldered in like this. You can even see I've got some, I use a uh, header often in feathers. You know, they have the male header, pin header, female header, socket header, and then they plug in and they make a nice connection. It's mechanically solid, which I really like. Uh, and it's electrically solid as well. And of course, you can use headers in breadboard. So, you know, great for prototyping goodies like that. Um, so this is kind of your standard uh, pin header. And uh, there's a couple things to note about it. And I'll get my calipers. I have to do a great search on how to get calipers too. Because people keep asking me. Yeah. Where do you get the calipers from? Um, so first thing to note is all of these are, uh, let me get the, this right up here. These are all, well, I mean, I can't, it's very hard for me to get this perfect, but they're basically uh, 0.1 inch spacing, otherwise known as 2.54 um, millimeter. Each box is about, you know, 25 um, mil and um, there are different platings for these. Um, so this one, you can actually really see the difference. Like normally, you know, people look at this, they're like, ah, oh, that's silver plate, that's not gold plate, it's not that golden. You're like, this one's, this one's way more golden or something. But when you see what tin plate versus, or hassle plate versus uh, any gold plate looks like, you really can tell. So this is silver plate and this is gold. 
Um, the reason why this side is, is not, it's not silver, sorry, it's tin. I say silver because it's colored silver. It's, it's obviously not real silver. It's tin plate. Um, the reason they do this is because this is the, the contact size. This is what's actually going to have a connection with uh, the socket header. They want this to be good for multiple insertion removal cycles. Um, and so it's going to get more risk of oxidation. You know, if you, if you recall your uh, Nintendo um, cartridge and how it would, it would oxidize and become uh, flaky and then you, it wouldn't recognize cartridges, they weren't gold-plated. They were, they were tin-plated, and that was the problem. They would eventually oxidize. However, this side is soldered in. It doesn't matter if it oxidizes because the solder is underneath the oxidation. Um, so it doesn't, it doesn't make a difference as long as the soldering is good. So that's why you'll, you'll have split um, tin gold. But usually you have only one or the other. Um, this is a Swiss pin. So you'll notice these are rounded pins compared to these, which are, are square pins. It's hard to tell really, but believe me, these are, these are square and they're, again, 25 mil each. These are um, much smaller. They're, they're you know, t less than 20 mil. These are not compatible, really. I mean, you can plug these into uh, breadboards, but it's really not a good idea to mix and match the different kinds. Uh, Swiss pin goes into Swiss pin sockets. Square pin goes into square pin sockets. Otherwise, you're going to have loose pins. Um, you got your shrouded IDCs. These are the same thing, but they just have a shroud around them. We'll, we'll see that. And then finally, you got the shorty style. So, you, you know, when you see them side by side, you can tell. So this one, you know, you solder to the short side always, and then the longer side is the contacts. This one is, it's about, you know, eight, sorry. It's about, uh, tw you know, almost a quarter inch. Um, this one is six millimeter. Actually, this is a little bit short, I think. Hold on. Is it? No. So this is about six millimeter uh, contact length. And then this one is about 4.5. And here's a question. Yeah. Do headers with a frame around them, like the ones on the back of LCD matrices, still called headers, and does it make a difference if they're keyed? Yes, we did cover IDC headers in, in, uh, in, in cables. They're keyed for, for the cable connector. They're a slightly higher quality, but of course they're bulkier. Um, you know, it depends. If you, if you if you want key, it, it, these are most useful only with um, when you have a cable. These are usually cable to board because the cable it can go either way, and so this is keyed for the cable. These are still headers. I consider these IDC header or um, shrouded headers. That's what they're usually called. Okay, so now that we know the terminology we're talking about, let's uh, go to uh, DigiKey. Let's give a great search. Okay. So, uh, you know, searching for headers, luckily there's actually many options for headers, but there are a couple things to watch out for when you're searching. So, um, first off, I like to put in 2.54 millimeter um, header, not point, 0 0.1 inch, just because like, I don't like putting quote marks in search boxes, but go forward if you want. I put 2.54 millimeters header. And thankfully, you know, there are like hundreds of thousands of them, um, but they, you know, they are in a couple different spots. So you've got the um, male pins and the receptacles, female sockets. So, you know, you want the, the matching connectors. These are the socket version. However, what uh, we want are the, the male pin ones. And um, so we want to match for our camera connector. So let's look at our camera again. Our camera has uh, one, two by one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So you want two by nine header. So the first thing you want to do is a number of rows, dual row. I mean, they have make up the quad row, which is amazing. You can really pack a ton in. Uh, we might as well only look for active while we're here. And um, you want number of positions. Now remember, because you just picked dual row, you'll want it, you don't want the nine, you want the 18, because two by nine, 18 total positions. Um, there are some times where you have ones that don't have some pins inserted, but I, you'll know when you need those. Um, then we talked about shrouding just a little bit ago, right? You can have different uh, shrouds around it. Um, so this one, for example, is shrouded. And you can see it's not shrouded all the way around. It's, it's skinnier 
because it only has shrouding on two edges. Um, or like, you know, this, whatever this is going on, what's going on here, I don't know, something going on there. We don't want shrouded, we want uh, a plain header because we want it just to plug right in and not have anything around it. So let's find the, sorry, I got lost here. So many options. Shrouding, unshrouded. Cool. Next step, positions loaded. All bases loaded, we want them all loaded. Next step, through hole or surface mount. Um, if you're picking placing, surface mount. If you're not picking placing, always use through hole. Surface mount it just is less mechanically strong. It always has a bigger risk of tearing off. And these are mechanically very strong. I mean, they can really rip off a PCB if you're not careful. So I always go with through hole. Now there's through hole and there's through hole right angle. Um, let's see if I can see a right angle one. We won't cover a right angle on this one, but maybe in uh, some, some future one, I'll, we will. So this is the right angle ones. Um, I'll note that the images are often uh, not the exact object they're rendering, so they may not have the exact number of pins. Here's an example, again, of that split gold on the contact tin on the um, solder point. So a little bit less expensive than full gold. It's kind of like the, the mullet of headers. All right, so um, next up, we actually didn't want right angles, so I'm going to go back, and I'm just going to do... I'm going to do only through hole. Okay, um, so next up, there's six tons of options, but uh, pitch, even though we s typed in 2.4 millimeter, sometimes other ones, two millimeter comes in because of the 2.54 or some other contact length or whatever. So let's, uh, let's pick this one. Breakaway and cuttable, um, if you look at headers, you'll see they often have little notches. It means you can break them apart very easily. Once you get dual row, it doesn't really matter. Um, row spacing is how much space between the rows. I also want uh, 2.54 because I want it to be a square. Grid termination, uh, kinked pin, there's a little bit, you know, you, you put them in, they, they stay, put a little bit more press fit solder, solder, wire wrap. Um, I think I want everything but wire wrap. Wire wrap are usually uh, thicker square pins. They're going to be much more expensive, so I don't think it'll really show up. And then, then the question is the the contact finish, um, which we chatted about. Do we want gold or nickel or tin, tin lead? Um, we do want this to be Rojas. So let's pick Rojas compliant just to get rid of the the leaded ones. And what's nice is you can see here, you know, these are rated for an amp or two. They're very good. Okay, so let's start looking at the, the options. So again, these are renderings, right? They're, I picked two by nine, but this is a two by two. The image doesn't, it's a rendering. It's, it's evocative of what you're getting, not the physical size. So just don't be weirded out. But you can see there's lots of different lengths. It's like you can get these super long ones. That's what I love about header. It's just like you can mix and match and get ones with like super long mating posts and like ones that are like stacked. It, it, it never ends. These super mega long, Swiss pin long, Swiss pin gold, super short. Okay, but we want, let's get the standard, right, standard. So for the standard, the contact length, oh my goodness, there's so many. Actually, let's go for um, square contacts. We don't want the Swiss pin. There's so many options. Um, and then I think let's just go for gold gold. I know there's like the tin golds. Let's just go for gold gold. So uh, contact finish gold for the post. And then um, the other one must be gold too. Okay, so now we've got only the gold ones. So then uh, I think you know, there's, there's the contact materials and, and, and thickness of, of the uh, Enig. Let's do the length of the, the headers because, again, we want the, the standard length. So the mating contact length is 6 millimeters. So let's scroll down. Oh, my goodness, there's so many here. So let's select maybe 6 to 8. Why not? Okay, and now um, I think we should just 
sort by price because we have about 500 options, but like none of the remaining options are that important to me. Like whether they're cuttable or whether they're in a bag or not, or whether, you know, what the exact, the con the, the post length, the contact length is it, if it matters to you, of course, pick that, but let's just, um, let's view prices at what well, you know, 1000 pieces and then sort by price. Okay. So the first thing that comes up is, uh, we pin. So this is like very inexpensive. This is only a couple of cents. This is a marketplace product. So if you purchase this first off, you can't back order it. And second, it doesn't ship from DigiKey. Um, they're often a lot less expensive because they're handled by a third party. Um, not always, but oftentimes, and they will take longer. They take five days to ship. Uh, in this case, there's not more than 18 in stock, which is sad. I definitely want eight, more than that many for my project. So let's uh, look again and um, these are, ooh, you know what? I think I selected the contact length wrong. Okay. Um, so now we actually, sorry, we have more options. So the, the next set that's available are the Sullins um, contact connector solutions. So for these, this one, you know, it's got the, I think this is eight, eight millimeter length. So for this one, um, you'll notice it doesn't say that they're in stock. But if you go here, it does say it's in stock. And then it says, can ship immediately, but it's a value added item. So value add item means they actually, DigiKey will cut these to size for you. They have like some probably hydraulic or pneumatic thing that they will automatically cut all of them to be the exact right size you want. Um, so instead of stocking like every size of every header, they'll just stock like the really long pieces and then they'll just sort of like when you go to like the Home Depot and you're like, I want like a sheet, you know, I want a couple two by fours, but I want them cut down to, you know, three feet. I don't want the full six foot length or whatever. And they'll cut them for you right there. You're, you know, you're just going to pay for what you end up needing and they'll do the cutting for you. It's just a lot easier than if you bought the 36 pin long ones and you sliced them yourself. So they have some in stock and the good news is that you can always order more and they'll be able to make them for you in a day or two um it may not ship immediately but as a value add item they always have like the raw materials they'll just do that that extra labor for you so this one's pretty good um you know it's 30 cents a piece when i buy 32 which is pretty good for gold plate headers um, to get them immediately and again i can get them in, in any length and size um, this one I think is a little bit longer. This is uh, eight millimeters, which is um, in a total length of 13. So it's, you know, one millimeter longer than the, the headers I have here on my desk. However, that's fine by me. It doesn't, for me, the actual length doesn't matter so much as long as it, it matches with the socket headers I've got. So, and this is what I'm going to get. This is Sullen's PRP C. 009 D fan RC. This is my great search. And that's a great search. That's how you find headers. Where in the world is that part I need? The great search with DigiKey. All right. So All right. You, thanks, everybody. You had said something about the writing system that the Greeks were using. What? And you said you were asking why, why did they why did they do that? You asked the chat. So now you have to tell the answer. Oh, so actually I was thinking of something else, but it's still interesting. Yeah. So when, when, we, when we had Phoenician script, um, Phoenician script was uh, left to right, sorry. Phoenician script was right to left. I'm afraid. Trying to remember which one it is. I think Greek is Greek is left to right or right to left. I can't remember which one it is, but it's it's the opposite. Basically, when we had when we were when we were chopping things into stones, we worked from um, left to right because we were we had to like hammer things, and so we would use the dominant hand to, to hammer and the and the left hand to hold it, or is it the other way around this way? But when they started writing on um, with inks, because you write with your dominant hand, we actually started writing left to right because otherwise your sleeve would get on the um, yeah. on the ink. 
So that's why it's like some scripts are, are top down or left to right if they're ink based compared to um, like chopping into stone or clay based. Yeah. I remember, re- I remember reading that and I was like, that's interesting. It's probably related to why they would write in a circle. Maybe they're waiting for the ink to dry. I don't know. All right. Okay. That is Desk of Lady Ada for the week. Okay. Stay tuned for shows during the week. And also, Ask an Engineer will be this Wednesday, show and tell. We also have Tuesdays, Product Pick with JP. Wednesdays, we also have No and Pedro. Collect all the drinkies. 3D Hangouts. And then Thursday, we have JP's Workshop. And Fridays, we have Deep Dives with Scott. And yeah, we'll be showing off some of these not forever trinkies, the um, cool characters that we're making for them, as well as the uh, actual ones that you'll be able to purchase. And they'll be limited edition because uh, there's not a lot of some of these parts that we're going to use and some of these things we're going to do. They're not forever. They're not forever trinkies. So okay. So we'll see everybody uh, next week. That is your desk of Lady Anna. Thanks, everybody.